welcome back to my channel. And if you are new to this space, you are also highly welcome. This is another quiz time. And in this section, we'll be looking at some structured questions that are related to the cervical vertebrae. If you try to use this image by the side here, this is where we have the alignment of the cervical vertebrae. These are basically pieces of bones that are arranged one on top of each other. We'll be looking at structured questions that are related to this region. And this will help us prepare for questions that are related to the cervical vertebrae in any examination. The first question we'll be looking at is, how is the cervical vertebrae different from the other vertebrae? We know that we have different segments of the vertebrae, which include the cervical, the thoracic, the lumbar, the sacra, and also the cortex. We know that all these sub-regions have different morphology and are distinct in their own way. So how is the cervical vertebrae different from the other vertebrae? Is it by the presence of the transverse process? Is it the long spinous process? Is it by the presence of the transverse foramina? Or is it by the presence of round vertebral canal? So which of these features distinct the cervical vertebrae from the other vertebral bones. The correct option here is the transverse foramina. We know that the cervical vertebrae is the only vertebrae that has foramina created on its transverse processes. The other vertebral bones are seen with transverse processes, but foramina are not created on their transverse processes. So the correct answer here is transverse foramina. Let's look at the second question, and this reads that the axis the axis is it seen to lack a body? Is the axis seen to have an odontoid process? Is the axis designed for nodding? Or is the axis seen to lack a vertebral foramen? So out of all these options, the correct answer here is that the axis has an odontoid process. The axis is the second cervical vertebral bone, and this axis is seen to be distinct in its own way. And its distinct feature is the presence of a dense or an odontoid process. And this is the correct option. For the third question, which reads that typical cervical vertebrae are typical cervical vertebrae, are they seen to include the third, the fourth, fifth, and also the sixth cervical vertebrae? Are they seen to include the fourth, the second, and also the seventh cervical vertebrae? Are they seen to include the fourth, the fourth, the fifth, and also the sixth cervical vertebrae? Or are they seen to include the second, the third, the fifth, and also the seventh cervical vertebrae? So out of all these options, which is the correct option as it relates to the typical cervical vertebrae, which means that the vertebrae that have the same morphology or structure. The correct answer here is the third, the fourth, the fifth, and also the sixth cervical vertebrae. These vertebrae are seen to have the same morphology, so they tend to look alike, and that is why they are so referred to as the typical cervical vertebrae. Why the other cervical vertebral bones are atypical? Because they are distinct their own way. So the correct option here is the third, the fourth, the fifth, and also the sixth cervical vertebrae. So let's move to the fourth question, and this reads that transverse foramina allow for the passage of transverse foramina created on transverse processes of the cervical vertebrae. It seems to allow for the passage of, is it for the passage of the internal carotid artery? Is it for the passage of the external carotid artery? Is it for the passage of the ascending pharyngeal artery? Or is it for the passage of the vertebral artery? Out of all these options, the correct option here is the vertebral artery. The vertebral artery is seen to be accommodated within the transverse foramina of the transverse processes of the cervical vertebrae. This is what runs through these holes created on the transverse process of these bones. And this is the correct option. So for the fifth question, which reads that the seventh cervical vertebra, the seventh cervical vertebra lacks the transverse foramina. Is it the seventh cervical vertebra as a five feet spinous process? Is it that the seventh cervical vertebra has a non bifid spinous process? Or is it that the seventh cervical vertebra has a dense or an adult process? 
The correct answer here is that the seven cervical vertebra has a non bite fit spine not present. We know that the seven cervical vertebra is one of the atypical cervical vertebrae because it is distinct in its own way. And the picture that separates it from the other cervical vertebral bone is a non bite fit spine not present. And this is the correct option. So for the sixth question, which reads that atypical cervical vertebrae, the atypical cervical vertebrae, are they seem to include the fourth, the fifth, and also the sixth cervical vertebrae. And they seem to include the third, the fourth, the fifth, and also the seventh cervical vertebrae. They seem to include the fourth, the second, and also the third cervical vertebrae. Or are they seem to include the fourth, the second, and also the seventh cervical vertebrae. The correct answer here is the fourth, the second, and also the seventh cervical vertebrae. These three cervical vertebrae are atypical. They are distinct, and this is why they are so referred to as the atypical cervical vertebrae. We've tried to highlight this in our lecture on the cervical vertebrae. If you've not checked that lecture, oh, please kindly go and do so. So this is the correct option. So for the seventh question, which brings that the condyles of the occipital bone connect with the contents of the occipital bone are they seem to connect with the axis are they seem to connect with the atlas seem to connect with the first thoracic vertebra or is it none of the above so the structure or the bone that is seen to connect with the occipital bone at its inferior region is the atlas the atlas is the first cervical vertebra bone and this is what creates the connection point with the occipital bone at the atlas to occipital joint. So this is the correct option here. For the eighth question, which reads that the atlas to axial joint, the atlas to axial joint is it seen to allow for nodding? Is it a non-functional joint? Is it seen to allow for rotational movement? Or is it seen to exist between the occipital bone and also the atlas? The atlas to axial joint is a joint that is seen between the atlas and also the axis. And we know that the atlas is the first cervical vertebra, while the axis is the second cervical vertebra. So the joint that exists between these two cervical vertebrae is referred to as the atlas to axial joint. So out of this option, the correct option here is that it allows for rotational movement. The joint between the atlas and also axis allows for this type of movement. For the ninth question, which reads that the atlas has a dense, or is the atlas seen to have a body? The atlas is it seen to have a non bifid long spinous crescent, or is it none of the above? Out of all these options, the correct option here as it relates to the atlas is none of the above. The atlas is not seen to have a dense, the atlas does not have a body. Hence, the second option here is incorrect. The atlas also is seen to have a bifid spinous process and not a non bifid long spinous process. For the tenth question, which is the last question, this reads that the fourth cervical vertebra is the first cervical vertebra seen with a non bifid spinous process. Is the fourth cervical vertebra seen with an odontoid process? Is the fourth cervical vertebra a typical cervical vertebra? or the fourth cervical vertebra lacks a body. So out of all these options, the correct option as it relates to the fourth cervical vertebra is that the fourth cervical vertebra is a typical cervical vertebra. The fourth cervical vertebra with its other counterparts, which include the third, the fifth, and also the sixth cervical vertebrae are all typical cervical vertebrae because they are seen to have the same structural configuration. And this is why they are so referred to as typical cervical vertebrae. So thanks for taking this quiz. I hope you find this useful. Let's have your grades in the comment section.